Hello, this is Ryan Wellman, sales engineer here at Jitterbit. I'm going to do a quick recording um, on uh, being able to create an account in Salesforce, uh, send that account to uh, Amazon uh, AWS, and we have a database cluster um, set up for uh, Aurora Postgres SQL. Um, and then by invoking a AWS Lambda function from that cluster, uh, we are going to uh, also uh, have an event-driven payload uh, sent back to Jitterbit to do an update in Salesforce. So I'm um, going to go ahead and start uh, with some configuration and setup in Amazon uh, before we do anything else. Uh, so you can see here on, on the first uh, tab that I have open, these are some uh, databases that I have in this Amazon RDS instance. Um, we're not going to go through actually setting up a cluster here. I, I've done that ahead of time, but it's it's a pretty simple process. Uh, Amazon has a nice wizard driven approach that will walk you through it and setting up the instance uh, is very, very quick. So out of the box, you'll, you'll get your cluster um, as well as the writer instance. And that is important because that will be uh, the one instance on the cluster that will have uh, write permission to do uh, what we want to do. Uh, the only thing I really kind of point out uh, to keep in mind when you're setting up uh, a database like this is uh, make sure that you uh, give it the correct uh, inbound and outbound uh, rules. Um, so that way the inbound and outbound traffic here can be uh, dealt with appropriately um, and also make sure that you make the database publicly accessible. Um, at least when I configured uh, this cluster, uh, this uh, publicly accessible uh, was was no, so I had to change that uh, to be able to uh, access it from Jitterbit. So um, setting up that database, again, pretty simple. Um, and so once I have that, uh, we have to do a couple things ahead of time before we can kind of get into uh, setting up uh, what we need to do to be able to um, sync the, the Salesforce and Amazon. So I'm gonna click over here to uh, the other tab that I have open and we're gonna start by creating a function. Um, this is the function that is gonna be um, ultimately called by the uh, event when uh, there is a new account that is inserted in our Amazon database. Um, so I can come right over here and create a function. Uh, we're gonna give this function a name and I'm just gonna call this se demo account function. Um, and then we can choose what language we're going to write this in. Um, I'm going to do this in Python. And uh, I do want to point out that I'm going to use Python 3.7. That is important because if you use uh, anything above Python 3.7, uh, one of the modules that we are going to use is no longer supported by Amazon. Um, and it is from Python 3.7, uh, I believe 3.6 and one version of two. So uh, we'll go ahead and choose Python 3.7. So that way uh, we can use our our module seamlessly here with Amazon. That's really all I need to select at this stage. I can select create function. Um, and what Amazon will do is it will kind of put together um, a sample function for us uh, that when then we're going to make some changes to to be able to handle what we want to happen um, within Jitterbit. So you can see now that Amazon has spun that uh, function up. Um, so we're going to actually come in here to this Lambda function. And we'll go ahead and leave uh, the definition uh, the way it is. We'll leave it as Lambda, Lambda Handler. Uh, it will take two parameters. It will get an event and a context um, when that Lambda is triggered. Um, so we are going to add another module import. And this is what I was uh, talking about earlier uh, with uh, the request module. Uh, anything later than 3.7 is not supported by Amazon. There are workarounds, but uh, it's just much simpler, especially for an easy use case to to just use this version. Um, so you can see here, we're just gonna kind of take out uh, the uh, code that was already existing. Um, and what we are going to do is we are going to configure a request.post event. That way we can send this to uh, a Jitterbit URL that we will put in that string here in just a moment. Um, and then we are also going to pass a JSON object, which in this case will be the event that comes in. Um, just for the purposes of the demo as well, let's go ahead and we'll print uh, to the log so we can see what that looks like. My event is, and then uh, Python formatting. We'll just say format event, and then that will print uh, the event to our logs that we can come back and look at. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, return object out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually return a JSON uh, and I'm gonna dump the event um, 
in here. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, Amazon has uh, some built-in cues that, that we could kind of take this thought process further down the road that I could then pass that uh, object into a queue. Uh, and that way it would kind of already be set up to do it. Ultimately, what we're really concerned with here is this uh, post um, that we're going to send to a Jitterbit URL. So let's go ahead and hop over here into Jitterbit and we will grab uh, the API that I set up here for uh, this demo. So let me switch over into my environment and I called that Amazon Trigger. Uh, for lack of a better name. So uh, let me go ahead and grab the URL uh, that's associated with this. And copy that. And then I can bring that right over here into my uh, function and copy and paste there. So what will happen is uh, when the event that we're going to define on our database uh, happens and, and we define how this is going to be called, uh, it will reach out to, to our function here. Uh, and it will go ahead and send the e event that we are going to configure uh, here in just a couple moments uh, as a payload uh, to that post method uh, within Jitterbit that we can then do things downstream. So you can see here, I, I've got to notice that the changes are not deployed. So I want to go ahead and deploy this function. You'll see I get a, a message up here at the top um, that that was successful. So that's all I need to do with my function for now. It will be important that I do remember um, this name and actually uh, I can go ahead and grab this uh, function ARN because uh, that's something that we're going to need here in just a couple minutes. So I'm going to just put that in my clipboard here off to the side. All right, now the next couple of things that we have to do here in Amazon before we're ready um, to kind of make the magic happen <laughs> is we need to create uh, a policy uh, and a role um, for the uh, what Amazon first to as the IAM, which is the Identity and Access Management. So let's go ahead and create a policy. And I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and choose JSON. So uh, just kind of in my research and figuring out how all of this worked, I found a, a JSON and that's kind of a good sample um, to start that will give me the minimum uh, permissions that I need to be able to uh, invoke this Lambda function. I can use you know some of the, the tools with Amazon to kind of build this myself, but I found that it was a little bit easier over here to uh, give it this kind of minimum uh, level. So uh, the SID in the grand scheme of things is not really important, but I just like to name things. So we'll just call this uh, demo uh, for our SID. Um, we're going to leave the allow, and this is going to be uh, the Lambda action that invokes a function. Um, so we actually need to now take this uh, ARN that we just copy and pasted a moment ago from what our function is. Let me grab that off my clipboard. Uh, as our resource and we'll put that in and then that's going to call uh, the right region, the account, and then it'll point to the SE demo function uh, that we just added. Um, so you can see now it looks like that it's, uh, Amazon likes what we put in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Um, now I do have to give this policy a name. So we'll just call this SE demo account policy. And you can see we have our Lambda that we just defined there. So I can now come down and create that policy. I'm gonna click that correctly, there we go. So you can see now our policy has been created. Um, so the next thing I need to do here is also create a role. So I will go ahead and come over here to my roles and create a new role. And if you're interested in what all of this does, um, I can kind of put some links uh, together and, and some documentation on this whole process as well for uh, what our functions and our roles do. So I'm just gonna go ahead here and click custom trust policy. Um, and you'll see similar to what we had with our role, uh, we have a uh, uh, JSON that I'm gonna go ahead and fill in. So let me go ahead and grab. Uh, what I have here, which will kind of just replace um, this. So uh, really the, the basic change that I made there, we can see it's, it's still allowed that they can assume a role um, and we want to be able to uh, access uh, the RDS. So um, let me go ahead and click next. And then it's going to ask me uh, what policy I want. So I'm going to tie the policy that we just created a moment ago on that SE demo um, account policy. We're going to tie that uh, policy to our role. And I'm going to go ahead and click next. And we're going to give this a name as well. So we'll call this SE demo account. This time we'll just call this role just so we see the difference. 
And that's really all we need to do at this step. So we can say create role. Doesn't seem to take the first time. And you can see now up here, we're getting a message that it is creating the role. And now that role is created. So uh, last thing that we kind of need to do here um, within Amazon to, to kind of have our setup uh, done uh, before we do anything else is we now need to come back uh, to the uh, database cluster um, that we have here. And at that cluster, we are going to go ahead and then add that role that we just created. So let me come and refresh. <clears throat> And you can see now here's the SE demo account role uh, that we created. And we'll go ahead and add the Lambda uh, feature to that as well. So let me go ahead and add that. And this will take just a moment. I've noticed uh, for this to update here within Amazon, uh, we'll give it a minute. If it hasn't, we'll come back and check on that here in a sec. So um, as far as the configuration uh, within Amazon itself, uh, we're, we're pretty much ready to go here. So uh, we need to go over to the database and, and do something uh, before we uh, kind of start kicking off this process and, and looks what, look at what happens. So uh, let me switch to a database that I have open. I'm using PG Admin, not the biggest fan of PG Admin. Uh, however, I did find that for this process, um, it, it seemed to work the best. I, I had a issue with a, another one of the browser tools that, uh, or that I was using and, and PG admin seemed to work great. So um, I have ahead of time created a table um, that I've called SE demo account. Uh, you can see we're just going to kind of get some, you know, field information on that account, name, address, phone number, that kind of stuff. So nothing in there at this point. Um, now I do need to kind of add some code in here that will uh, kind of create my triggers and, and help with the process. So um, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that in. And I'll explain what we have here. Um, so you can see this is going to create an extension if it doesn't exist to be able to use AWS Lambda. I wanted to include that just as an explanation because that needs to happen the first time. I've already done that on this instance, so I will kind of copy this or comment this out. It won't hurt it, but it, it will give you a message in the log that, you know, it, it's kind of skipping and it makes you kind of pause to see what's happening. So we are going to uh, ultimately create a function that's going to uh, return a trigger. Um, and what it's going to do is perform a, a Lambda invoke procedure um, on a Lambda function. And this is where we're going to build that event payload uh, that we saw uh, kind of in our, our function in the first step where we're going to capture the database ID uh, that gets created um, on Amazon. And we are going to capture the Salesforce ID that gets written when we pass a Salesforce account in here, uh, because in Jitterbit, we're going to do a write back to, to uh, Salesforce to update the external ID with this database ID value. So um, we can build out you know, all of the fields here on this table. Uh, we're just using two for the purposes of a demo to kind of keep the event object nice and clean and to, to just kind of show uh, two-way functions functionality here between Amazon and Salesforce. Um, so once uh, that trigger is uh, created, uh, we're going to drop um, this trigger uh, here. If it exists, um, we'll create a new trigger that we call a JB account trigger um, on that table, the SE demo account table. And it's going to execute this function uh, that we have up here, which will trigger um, the SE demo account function that we defined in Amazon just a few minutes ago. Um, and then this is uh, required uh, from Amazon with the with the region in which that function lives. So uh, it's that can be pulled from the uh, Amazon UI there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to highlight and run this. Um, you can see that was successful. So just to kind of keep this clean, I'll go ahead and delete what we just put in there because now that will exist on our SE demo account table. So now at this point, we should be um, set up and ready to go uh, with our uh, process for uh, creating a account in Salesforce and sending that account uh, via Jitterbit to Amazon. So let's first, before we do all that, come over here uh, back to Jitterbit. We'll go into a Cloud Studio project uh, that I created, which is Amazon AWS Aurora Cluster. So just so we can see the flow of what's going to happen, um, I've got my Salesforce account WSDL uh, that I put in the SOAP request. Uh, we'll get that account that comes in. 
uh, I wrote it to memory, and then we're going to uh, route that to an upsert within uh, Amazon. Uh, we'll acknowledge if that process was successful back to Salesforce, uh, that, that we got that, and Salesforce can clear that from the outbound message. Um, once that happens as well, um, Amazon is also going to trigger another API uh, that will point to this 1.3 operation, uh, which is that uh, URL that we put in the Amazon function. Uh, so we'll get that event payload here. Um, we'll grab those values and, and we'll update our account in Salesforce. So let's go over here to the Salesforce instance that I have. Uh, just to kind of speed this up, I went ahead and populated the, the fields that we're trying to collect. So uh, we have an account name, a, a phone number, uh, an email, uh, and, and an address. So uh, when I save this, this should trigger all of our process, and we can kind of see um, this all working in action. So we can see there, all right, my Salesforce um, account was created. I'm going to go ahead now and switch over to the uh, database. And we will come and select all from that account. And you can see now we've got our uh, account that we just created. Uh, there's that uh, name that we had, our, our address, our phone number, our email, and we wrote the Salesforce ID. And so um, by this point, we should also expect that the Amazon uh, Lambda function was invoked that uh, had that event uh, on a new account being created. And if I come back here to Salesforce and go to the details, you can see now I have an external ID um, that is the value of five, which also matches the ID um, that exists in the Amazon uh, instance over here for the demo account. Um, so that's pretty much it. I do want to at least kind of circle back here um, to the function that we started with uh, within Amazon. Uh, so I can come over here and remember we had that uh, we were just going to print what the event looked like so we can look at the logs. Uh, those are going to be found under monitor um, so I can come and see, uh, you know, the recent logs that uh, kind of happen. So if I open this. Uh, so you can see here, don't think I actually grabbed the right one. Let me go back to the logs and I want the logs on the SE demo account function. And this would have been the one that just ran. There we go. Um, so you can see here that uh, there's that Python version that we were using. So it'll kind of just give you some information about what that function is doing. Obviously, if the functions got more complicated, this would become a lot more valuable. Um, but there's our, our Python. And ultimately, here's that uh, print statement that we put where it says my event is. And you can see what the object, how that was configured here um, in Amazon. That's what got delivered to uh, the, the payload via APIM. Um, and that was kind of the whole process. So uh, hopefully that was helpful and, uh, and you find some value. Thank you. Okay.